I see a beautiful line of vice right there. I want to pick it up, and then I'm like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. Four pack is $21. Yeah. What the hell, man? So, um... Aloha, welcome to the bar, my Be More Brew Crew friends. Tonight, I have got a special guest with us. I've got Mr. Chris Knott, the co-owner of Abbey Wood Brewing Company. Now, you have seen their stuff all around the state of Maryland in your favorite tap houses and your favorite liquor stores. If you see that big, beautiful can that's got the word Vice on it, it looks like it's right out of Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> Vice City. That's their stuff. Yep. Dude, thank you so much for coming down thanks and joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yep. Tell me what we're drinking tonight, dude. So first of all, cheers. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Um, tonight we are drinking is called Oxford Comma. Um, this was actually our first beer that we had uh, produced on the production line. Um, That's good, man. It's, um, it's, 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 it's probably one of my favorite beers just because I, I mean, I love a good double IPA, but this is high sixes, mid sixes, um, normally comes out. Um, yes. so it's drinkable. So it's got all the body of that new England IPA, but you can really, um, you know, you can put a couple back and not, that is nice and smooth, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, yep. for real. It's beautiful colors, nice and hazy. That's and this is, this one's right off the line. So obviously with, it's fresh. Yeah. With most hazies or new England's, whatever you want to call them, we typically call them new England's cause you know, we, uh, we kind of found the uh, New England IPA craze when we traveled up to uh, um, to Treehouse uh -huh. um, in um, Connecticut. No, no, no. I'm sorry, Massachusetts. And, um, yeah, I mean, the, the fresh, when you get them right off the line, that's that's where they're at. I mean, It's a thing of beauty. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. All right. So, a little behind the scenes. We went to high school together. We did. Go Hall. Yep, yep. Now, you were A-list celebrity in high school. I, I was, like, mid-B-list. I'm going to be honest. Like... I was I was a sports guy, but then I was also kind of like a nerd. Nah, I was B list too, man. No, man, no, no. you were a total A lister. Yeah. <laughs> okay, whatever, we'll go with it. <laughs> so, how do you get from going to high school? You're doing a casual drinking thing through mm -hmm. college, maybe more. I mean, everyone was in college. Through but... probably my early 30s, actually. Yeah. And then you just decide, hey, I'm going to take the plunge and and let's do this. Like, let's start a brewery. So, um, I got to be honest, I didn't really drink craft beer until I was. 31 i thought the you know when when dogfish had 60 minute was coming out um uh, my buddy that um a friend of mine i grew up with and was actually playing in a band with at the time um was trying to get me to drink a dogfish 60 minute ipa forever and i'm uh -huh. um, just slamming coors lights and that <laughs> um <laughs> we all did it's fine i couldn't take that hop taste um but he asked me one time he got in home brewing and he asked me to you know brew with him once yeah and um I was like, yeah, you know, when I was watching the process and I always liked, you know, scientific, you know, things, biology and, you know, just the process of doing things, um, you know, being a computer engineer, you know, you, you understand, you know, you yeah, man. processes and see how things are, are built. So, I mean, I was enjoying that. But once he dumped the hops into that beer, into mm -hmm. the into the wart, like he was like, smell that. And it was like something changed in my it just snapped. huh? And then I started, uh, I, we were joking around, like, chasing the hop dragon ever since. Like, really? so that was, like, my, oh, my God. And then I was like, you know what, let me give me one of those dogfish heads. And for some reason, at that point, I now liked it. It was weird. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we went through that. And, and then my uh, my cousin and myself um, immediately the next day spent um, 400 bucks on a homebrew kit and started the brewing The next beer. day. Yeah. I mean, it was like, we knew, oh, man, this is great. So you just fell in love. Fell in love with it. Um, wow. And they had been brewing beer ever since um, and worked our way up from all the extract kits and everything that's involved in brewing beer. So that was 2011 because it was like two weeks before my daughter was born. So mm -hmm. it's been 12 years. Um, and um, So zero background in brewing. Just no. dove right in. Yeah. Right. I mean... And and I'm normally the kind of guy like if I'm going to do something I you know my wife always gets mad at me because I rarely do things half ass if I'm going to do it I go all into a fault sometimes right, you right. know um, I showed you pictures earlier of my basement it's um, crazy dude you have so, an awesome setup yeah, my wife is a saint because we bought our house in 2015 and I said oh you know hey maybe this corner can be where the guys can brew with us now and that turned into us you know brewing on a uh, extract kits to now brewing all grain and then we took the step from all grain and. We spent, you know, five thousand dollars on an electric brewery setup that drilled a hole in my house so we could vent it to the outside and everything. So, um, so that's where it all started. That's your where it all started. Your basement. Yeah, that's it, well. It, it started actually. It started. Abbey Wood started. We started brewing at my cousin's house on Abbey Wood Court in White Marsh. 
Oh, so that's where that's where the name that's came where from. the name comes from was from where we were bre literally brewing in his little cellar way cut mm -hmm. out you know and um that's where it came from we, we must have went through when we thought about making it a company we probably went through 40 50 iterations of names and everything just felt forced and we yeah. just kind of came back to that that's so, nuts yeah all right well here you are years later mm -hmm. you're now in stores you're in tap rooms mm -hmm. So you've you've kind of made it. I mean, like I, that's got to be a proud moment when you go into a liquor store and you see something that's your own brainchild. It was cool. It was um, it was cool. I got to be honest. I mean, it did feel like so uh, if I if my if my math's right, August third, two thousand twenty two. That's the date that your stuff hit stores. Yes, correct. Yep. Yeah. So what was it like on that day? Was it nervousness? Was it? It was, and and actually, um. A couple days before, um, our distributor that we were working with had set up tastings. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we were, you know, for our first couple runs, we were going around and hitting tastings really hard at some of these local stores to just to, you know, be the guy standing there. Would you like to try some of this? Mm -hmm. um, and craft beer lovers are, I mean, they're they're amazing to talk to anyway. So yeah. um, that was great. Um, but that was that was surreal, like sitting there, like telling people to try to taste something that was literally a recipe that we came up with in our basement yeah and work to have it scaled up to a production level you know so yeah now so all right what was one of your biggest struggles what was one of your biggest hurdles kind of getting started with with your guys and you really made that plunge and like hey you know we're gonna really get into the so um uh, <laughs> well i've said it a number of times our biggest strength and our biggest weakness is you know we we started as a brew club mm -hmm. and then decided to take the leap and hey let's try to make something out of this after we went to gettysburg brew fest as a beer club and uh -huh. our line at the brew fest was like i mean we're next to all a bunch of big boys and our yeah. line was just it it just was non-stop and we were like we could maybe do something maybe we have something here you know yeah. people seem to like the beer um but again it's a brew club of eight guys mm -hmm. um we always said our you know our biggest strength and our biggest weakness is eight guys right and eight pretty strong individuals, strong willed strong individuals. Will. So that's been our probably our biggest challenge um, through this, you know, the better part of the past couple of years. That and COVID. Um, COVID. Oh my <laughs> yeah. gosh! Don't get me wrong, COVID. So if you want to talk about COVID and and your palate, so COVID hit me in a weird way because I used to despise mm. IPAs before I got COVID. Right. Really. I, I thought they tasted like cat piss, dude. Seriously, I did not like IPAs after I got COVID. Same thing with coffee. I, I did not blood. like coffee after I had COVID. I don't know. It totally messed with my palate. I absolutely love it. It's probably like my go-to thing now. Right. I, any really? kind of IPA. Yeah, man. The hoppier, the better. I love it. And I drink coffee black now. Go COVID. I yeah. know. Dude, I yeah. like COVID was good All for right, me. Right. Like, seriously. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. It really expanded my palate in a weird way that I enjoy now so many other beers. Same thing with sours. Right. So right. I would have actually hated Abbey Wood back in <laughs> right, right. Like 2019. And myself too. I would have hated, you know, 10 years ago, I would have said, "Who? there's no way I'm drinking any of this. So yeah, it's funny how, you know, our taste buds play on you. So People go into stores, they are likely going to see that Grand Theft Auto can with the big word right. vice on it. But, That's like yeah. one of your biggest lines, right? Yeah. Um, so um that's our that's basically our sour line. Based trying to do um, you know, uh when COVID first happened, we were actually we were actually finishing our business plan up uh March eighth, I wanna say, mm -hmm. 2020 and getting ready to start looking at financing and shopping for real estate and a week later we obviously know no, what happened so that completely changed our business plan obviously timing worked for us because there's not a chance we would have wanted to open in that environment and then have a lease and all of a sudden not be able to serve anybody but during that time sours um you know ipas were kind of the hype Mm -hmm. at the time right they still kind of are and they they are to an extent but sours really during that time kind of took off and i mean i was finding myself i was hitting full tilt and and rar and you know and 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 trying to support these local business actually i'm sorry i i said my excuse to my wife was i was trying to support these local businesses mm -hmm. but really i was trying to support <laughs> my my uh habit of and love for these crazy sours and rer had a peanut butter cup sour just random things so vice is our attempt at at uh trying to create things that taste like you know everyday snacks or everyday treats or or heavily fruited but also a little bit more backed off than 
your typical thick fruited sour. Some of these thick ones are, or you almost got to be hungry to drink them. And we're trying to back off of that. Uh, so let me hit you with a couple yeah. here. A couple yeah. that I'm aware of, right? So this okay. is crazy. So we got caramel apple. Yep. yep. Red velvet cake. Mm -hmm. Egg custard snowball. Sky blue snowball. Is that right? Yeah, skylight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sweet cherry pie. Mm hmm. Passion orange guava. Pineapple upside down cake. Yep. Cranberry vanilla a la mode. Yep. I got one in there for you too. Yep. <laughs> and a strawberry lemonade. Yes. Yep. I mean, those all sound delicious, especially like the snowball ones. Yeah. I would. <sighs> I would, I'd, I'd actually, I, honestly, the, our snowball ones that we put out this past year, uh -huh. um, I would be honest, every now and again, you're, you're not, they're not all going to be winners. Uh -huh. I will be, I will be, I will be honest and I'll be critical of myself as well. All right, man. I don't think, you know, we, we do things on our pilot system, which is one barrel and then try to scale up to a 20 barrel brew or rather, I'm sorry, a 20 barrel. We, the, what we do with our sours working with Oliver is we split our, our sour base into two so that we can have two different skews come out. So one 20 barrel brew will yield about nine to 10 barrels worth of beer split in half. And then we have two flavors that we're able to make by adding adjuncts after the fact. Very cool. I don't think um, those snowball flavors were what they could have been. Okay. But... That doesn't mean, hey, if you, just, first you don't succeed, try, try again. So yeah, this one tweaks with the recipe every year. This summer we are going out. to. This summer I'm gonna. We're gonna work at it again and realize what we need to do to make that better. I thought they were okay, mm -hmm. but I don't honestly don't think they were up to our standards this year. And and that's and that's really just you know sometimes the math doesn't work. It's like baking, you know. So all right, man, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Go ahead, right here. So. Someone like me, I walk into a liquor store, I see a beautiful line of vice right there, I want to pick it up, and then I'm like, holy shit, mm -hmm. four pack is $21. Yeah. What the hell, man? Yeah. You got to you gotta tell me what's going on there. I know there's something more to it, but fill me in. Like, what goes into that price point? Sure. Um. So, uh, we want to make a lot of money. No, I'm just joking. No, <laughs> Dude, that's, who does? No, we no. know. <laughs> I wish that was, I wish that was the motive behind it. And that, that, that was a reality, but it's not, um, any of these sours to make are incredibly expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Just the base itself, the grain bill. Um, obviously most of the sours that we're doing on the vice line, uh, um, have lactose added. So that's an additional cost on, on top to kind of cream it out a little bit and make sure that it's not overly sour and that it, it does. So the grain bill itself, just the ingredients are, you know, more expensive than a, than a typical grain, you know, bill. Right. Right. Then, um, throw in the adjuncts after it that, I mean, it's, it's killer. And, and ever since COVID it's, it's, it's gone even crazy. Um, there are some times where we're able to cut costs here and there working with someone like Oliver. If we know they're doing something with cherry and then we're able to buy certain things in bulk, we can save a little bit of money. But for the most part, red velvet, there's not too many other people trying to do red velvet cake right. or pineapple upside date cake. Um, exactly. That, or rather, I'm sorry, that are in the same brewery that we're producing our beers. So yeah. now, now you're contract with Oliver, right? We are contract brewing with Oliver. Correct. Yeah. Right now we do not have our spot. We can get into that a little bit later um, in detail, but to answer that question, so so now you're adding those adjuncts, and the adjuncts are expensive. They yeah. are they're expensive. Then, on top of that, add the can label, um, and then distribution. Mm -hmm. Right, everyone um, wants a piece, and it really is. Um, by the time you're done, you know, by the time you're done producing one of those beers, it's about two dollars in change, two fifty maybe to produce that beer. Uh huh. Maybe three, depending on it, like caramel apple, maybe closer to three bucks to produce that. And that's beer. not even what's going to cost you to get it on the shelf. Right. Right. So that's three bucks to produce a beer and then the distributor, obviously, and they do a great job and they work their ass off to get that on the shelf, but that gets on the shelf. So, you know, you're, you know, probably looking at about four fifty a beer. So, you know, if the that's retail, crazy, yeah, man. if the retailer is charging, you know, the retailer might be marking it, marking it up 30%, something mm -hmm. to that effect. Well, they got to um, make their money too. Yeah. So the margins are very thin, especially on the sours. I, it's crazy to look at that on the shelf, but the margins are very, very thin on the sours. So it's, it's not just a made up number to try to. I will hit. vouch for dude. Like yeah. I've paid full price for your stuff and it is worth every penny. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, I have too, um, but I'll be honest. I've also had moments of. Yeah, man. Mm, damn. 
Well, with the economy is bad like right? that, it's got her business a little bit right now with inflation the way it's at. Right. Just people being a little bit more. Expensive. Which is why I would I would suggest to anyone if there's a beer, a local beer that they love mm -hmm. from a certain brewery, go buy from that brewery. Right. You know, um, and and that's not to not to say anything. I mean, these liquor stores really and and like even our distributor has made amazing inroads to get local craft beer out to the general public. I mean, it, you weren't seeing that three or four years ago. Um, you are now. They do a great job. But if there's something where you sat back and you said, yeah, I mean, I'd like to buy a case or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because I guarantee it's going to be cheaper at the, at, at you know, because you, you cut that out. So now I don't know if you want to share this, right? But you, you shared with me a story when we were on the phone the other night, mm -hmm. basically about how close you were mm -hmm. to securing your own spot. Is that something you want to get into or just share a little bit about? Maybe not going as much detail, yeah. but um, yeah, I can tell you that we were very close to purchasing a spot this past summer or not well actually it's kind of heartbreaking to hear this story i don't want to get into too too much yeah, yeah. detail or or, or or name names but i'm sure you know some people can probably you know read between the lines but we were very close to purchasing a spot um equipment from a spot from a you know a brewery that had um a, an amazing brewery that unfortunately had um not been able to you know um keep the business alive and um really commercial real estate just kind of got it we just could not it was just a bad business decision in right. the end um and it's unfortunate. We 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 thought, um, you know, I mean, every people are struggling in the in the brewing industry right now. It's hard. Right? It is a yeah. really really rough environment right now. Uh, ingredients are high. I mean, the cost of everything is high right now, and those margins are thin. And the biggest thing is that the the best margins are in the tap room. Mm -hmm. They're not on the store on the shelves. They're you know they're certainly in, yeah 100%. they're in the tap room and getting people back into the seats and getting. Um, can I curse? A yep. word? I did already. Yeah. I All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but getting asses back in the seats, getting ass to seats, man. is um that's that's the toughest thing. Um, so we ended up uh you know kind of nixing the deal, and it was a little you know, it was heartbreaking because we thought we we were there. Um, but again, seeing kind of the the general climate, yeah, might not have been the best. Might it. not have been the best, or might not have been the worst thing in the world for. Or you'll be the next happen. casualty. Yeah, correct. You don't make it's the very right possible, and right and and just because something is a good deal doesn't mean that it's a good business decision. Yep. So, and that's the that's what we're trying to keep in our head and continue to work with Oliver, who's been amazing. I can't say enough good things at at, at the guys at Oliver. Um, but continue to work with them and you know keep ourselves somewhat relevant in the market. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So while you've been involved in the whole like brewing and distribution thing here in Maryland, like what's one of the craziest things that us as consumers don't get to see something you want to pass along, just anything, maybe some of the festivals, anything that you want to pass along to our viewers that you think we might be like, wow, holy shit. <laughs> um, oh man. I mean, the naming of beers. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love seeing other people's names of beers. I love naming beers. Um, the way that they come about and hearing people's stories about how certain names come about, for instance, this, um, Oxford comma, we, the, the, this is named this because when we were writing our business plan, um, my cousin and I got into an argument about whether or not there should be a comma before the and uh -huh. in a sentence. And if it, you know, and we were sitting there and we literally argued for 20 minutes. I about hope you won since you're a Calvert Hall guy and I'm a Calvert. So we got to represent. Hey, I Calvert mean, I guess Hall I don't know. I mean, he <laughs> believes they should be used. I believe they shouldn't be used. Um, but in the end, we we found out that in in that conversation, we found out that the name of that comma is actually called the Oxford comma. comma. So just the way that that those types of things happen, um, spontaneous. I, I I mean, so who's the big Grand Theft Auto Vice City fan? Um, our art our, our artist Paul, okay. um, <laughs> our IT guy, and our artist our artist Paul. Yeah. So and you know, someone's a movie nerd too. Someone's got to be a movie, and nerd that's all of us, honestly. That's okay, all of us, because you know everything we're trying to come up with names that that have to do with you know weird you know, circle of trust. Um, yep. Uh, I'm trying to think of another. Are you one. a pothead fucker? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, you just, I mean, you guys got me just recently. I told you this. I was in the store and I literally saw the uh, the slick shoes mm -hmm. and. For there you go. Goonies. And yeah. like, I'm a Goonies guy. I picked up the can. I like, I knew I was going to get it. And I was like, holy shit, this is Abbey Wood, man. This is awesome. Right, right. And I needed it. And I was like, wow, look at that. It's chocolate. It, you know what? Anything chocolate, I'm going to buy it. Sorry. Yeah. You got me. So I'll tell you what. Um, It's on the Goonies. It, it, it's on Slick Shoes. Um, It is actually on the can. But this is just a little kind of tidbit for people. Mm -hmm. On every can, 
Paul, who does our art. Okay. I'm, um, I'm looking right now. There's like a little Where's Waldo moment. Dude, there's some more in this can. What the heck? <laughs> there's a little Where's Waldo moment. When he made the Slick Shoes can, uh -huh. he, he made the Goonies key. Okay. On the can. All right. And the minute I saw it, I was like, hey, man. I was like, that's cool and all. Kind of looks a little phallic, man. Uh -huh. You know, and he was like, what are you talking about? I was like, it, uh, it kind of looks a little. So he's like, no, 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 it's good. So run it. And um, Kevin and Oliver had come back to us and said, hey, man, you know, that, that's pretty cool. But, uh, you know, there's a dick on your can, right? <laughs> We're like, what? So because of that, um, there is a phallic symbol hidden in all of our can artwork wow. at this point forward. So, if anyone wants to do a Where's Waldo, there is, I mean, and he hides them really, really, you know, either subtly or, awesome. or small. But I'm they go yeah. every can yeah. I have Abby one now looking for a dick. Right, right. <laughs> Everything great. from Slick Shoes that was run last year forward, he's tried to make sure there's at least something in there. Okay, so everything last yep. year till now. Yep. All right, fantastic. So what does the future hold for Abby Wood Brewing? Um, Honestly, that I'll be honest. That I mean, that's a good question. Um, You're going to keep up with the contract brewing. That is 100. percent right Yes, we, uh, we will keep we'll continue with the the contract brewing because it, it has been it has been good to us. Mm -hmm. um, it's been good to get our name out there. Um, it's fun, and we can continue to kind of stay in 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 the passion. Um, right now, uh, honestly, kind of keeping an eye out for real estate. But the, I mean, I'll tell you what, the commercial real estate market is brutal. Yep. So we will probably be, um, you know, just keeping our ear to the ground for, um, for spot solid up. opportunities. I'll sure. put it that way. Um, because the best opportunity would be something that requires minimum infrastructure upgrade. And a brewery needs a lot of infrastructure. Yep. So, um, but at the same time, too, again, we're just, you know, kind of making sure that we're making a good business decision and not just doing something because it's a good deal. Yeah. Um, I, because we don't want to be another casualty. Exactly. And right now, yeah. Dad, when you like I'm on all these these threads and I just like every other day, it feels like, oh, another one shut their doors. Another like, one's closed. Respite. Like when they went, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, I was loving all the beer that they put out. Um Full tilt when they went out was, you know, oh, God, yeah, that was heart heartbreaking. heartbreaking. You know, it doesn't mean that was such a big like. Go it to was. The spot. It was and heartbreaking, like, and those guys were, you know, I mean, they're they're two of the coolest, you know. I mean, that's what hurts the most. We yeah, they were like just awesome great. guys. They were great, you know. Um, so you know, to see things like that is is, is rough, and we, I don't want to be another, you know, I, I don't want to be a casualty. If we're going to open it, I want to open it because one, I love brewing, I love beer, and you know, it's something I can do with my friends, and you know, hopefully, you know retire to this you yeah. know which is basically retiring to being a janitor right because <laughs> if you're brewing beer you're cleaning up you know shit 80 percent of the time yeah uh, but uh yeah um and then maybe maybe leave my kids something you know to that's take no, that's, that's what we all want to do yeah, man yeah. leave something for our kids yep all right so can you give us just really quick like maybe a little preview of what you guys have coming out this spring maybe just sure. a little hint yeah um so last spring, um, we did it and um, it went great. Uh, I think we're going to try to align it. We're going to try to get in touch with the flower mart down the city. Um, I'm not sure if you had it, Lemon Stick, last year. Yeah. Um, but it, I mean, it, it is a love it or hate it beer. And it's it's wild because it's I'm like a huge citrus guy. So it's, it's, it's one of those um, beers where people are like lemon and peppermint. Mm -hmm. How the hell can that go together? Um, so it's the 4th of July staple in this it, Right. It is. Well, and, and, and that's the thing if you're, it, but it's super hyper, it's hyper local to Baltimore, right? Oh, it well, is, I didn't know that. The lemon stick was like created by the lady sodality. Some in the, at the flower mart down on Charles street. Huh. Didn't and know. yeah. So anyone outside of Baltimore has tasted and been like, what the hell is this lemon and peppermint? That's disgusting. But everyone that lives in Baltimore tasted like, man, that's amazing. So it's a love it or hate it beer. Um, we'll be running that again. We're working right now on a couple other flavors, um, you know, flavor combinations. We have out right now. We just did Acai Bowl Vice. Um, that's out right now. Um, I'm excited about that because I don't like bananas in mm -hmm. real life. But in beer, apparently I like them. Well, um, all right. I'm excited to try that. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. All right, so we got one little final segment here sure. for you. We're going to hit you with the Maryland Minute. We're going to see how awesome of a Marylander 
you really are. I'm going to hit you with some rapid fire questions. Yeah. You got to give me the answers to them right away. And this okay. is these are all Maryland centric questions, so don't worry. All right, are you all ready? Right. I'm ready. Who's got the best Maryland crab cakes? Coco's. All right, burgers, cookies, or otter bites? Burgers. Cookies. Yeah. Have you ever yelled O oh, at the national anthem in another state? Ooh. No. Man. I know. Oh. 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 I'll leave now. I'll leave now. What beer do you drink when you're having crabs? Coors Light. What is the weirdest thing that you put Old Bay on besides crabs? Corn on the cob. Is that weird? That's is that no unusual? man? Because us Maryland, I I put that's I put pretty it on unusual. My uh, popcorn. Yeah, yeah, that's good too. Yeah. All right. F. Mary Kill, Thrasher's Fries, Fisher's Popcorn, or Dumser's Dairyland? Ooh. A Mary Dumser's, F. Thrasher's, and Kill Fisher's. All right, what's the worst or weirdest place you've ever stayed in Ocean City? Ooh. The worst, um, the Ambassador Hotel. Senior week? Yeah, senior week, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was bad, yeah. But it was great though, in the best way. Dude, so when I yeah. went to senior week, the guy I was staying with, he got stabbed on the boardwalk. Really? The first night there. I'll, I'll tell you the story okay. off camera. Off camera, off camera, of course. <laughs> right. um, have you ever attended the Hun Fest? Mm. I have not, no. I've been to Cafe Hun a couple times, but no, I've never attended the Hun Fest. What's your go-to snowball flavor? Egg custard. Is there any other? No. I, I mean, I love egg custard, but you know, like I'm a chocolate guy, no. sorry. No, get out of here. All right, what is your favorite Baltimore sports legend? Boog Pal. All right, that's a good one. You see him all the time down at the yard. Yep. All right, which one are you going to? The zoo, the aquarium, or the science center? Yeah, science center, definitely science center. Science yeah. center. Yeah. You are a nerd. Yeah, right. All I am, right. I am 100%. Yep. It is all good. I would say those answers make you a true Maryland man, so it's all wonderful. All right. Awesome. Cheers, dude. Yep. I. This was a wonderful Oxford comma. I got to say, man, like this is definitely mm. a go-to in the summer. I could just see myself like sitting on a yacht, rocking out. Ooh, <laughs> another <laughs> Actually, line. Dude, you know what? I got to okay, I got a question because yeah, you okay. guys put out an iconic picture on your Instagram of that yacht rock, right? Yeah, yeah. And someone is sitting on that yacht with a bunch of beer. Yeah. Who is that? Whose wife was that? That's sitting on that yacht. That's, that that's, that's my wife. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, so was she in the background with the yeah, yeah. bikini on? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I figured yep. that was one of that's your guys' wife. wives, yeah. and I'm yep. like, and it wasn't a yacht. It, we made it look like a yacht by making sure we were as close as possible. It was a 23 foot uh, sea ray. So yeah, very cool. Yep. Hey, good enough. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, thank you so much for joining us here. Absolutely. I am so blessed and privileged that you spent you know your evening here with us, yep. and uh, that was a wonderful beer. I would highly recommend this oxford comedy you know what and if i'm giving a review i'm gonna you know i'm gonna drop a review right now on this zero to five i'm not gonna bullshit because i'm always gonna be honest with whatever i review i'm going a solid like four three on the oxford comma which is for an ipa for me that is a very good score so dude you rock this yeah honestly if i'm reviewing it and giving myself giving it an honest review myself i'm probably four one four two yeah i mean i think it's i've had some damn good ipa it warrants, I, and i have too i mean i've been to, i've been to treehouse we went to Austin. I mean, we, we, we've done some beer tours. Um, I mean, I think it's a solid, it's oh, right. It's a solid four. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 For me, that's a wonderful score. So don't make four threes bad in my book. That's Absolutely. Awesome. All you. right, man. Well, thank you so much. We're going to wrap this up and thank you guys. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming down, hanging with us. And, uh, Hey, thank you for watching. We would love it. If you subscribe to the channel, go check out Abbey Wood Brewing. They have got some awesome stuff on the shelves. So stay tuned for everything they're doing. I mean, it is absolutely fantabulous. All right. So cheers, everybody. Until next time, aloha from the bar. Go visit Abbeywood. Cheers, guys. Cheers.